Hello everyone, Ether Song here, and welcome back for some more Triangle Strategy. We'll be beginning Chapter 2. Let's jump right into it. Thirty years after the salt iron raged across Norzelia, a vein of precious minerals was unearthed in the kingdom of Glenbrook. From east to west, joy swept the land. Yes, resources are fairly scarce around this, around the nations here. United at last in common cause, the Kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, and the Holy State of Hyzant endeavored to wrest this bounty from the earth, with each nation providing expertise and resources. This uneasy alliance between once bitter enemies will herald a new era of tranquility in this long embattled realm. Definitely can hope for the tranquility. One after another, dignitaries from each nation arrive in Glenbrook to solidify this accord and toast to its success. The first step on the road to peace. Among those who would forge this road is Sarah Noah Wolfford. Inheriting the title of Lord Wolfford from his father Simon, he must decide what foundation he would lay for this new era. So I'm guessing we're gonna be faced with some choices about who we want to side with, with various issues coming forward. And that will determine who our allies and who our enemies will be. Chapter 2, To Arms, Brave Warriors. Welcome to Castle Wolford, Minister Lila. Allow me to express my gratitude to the Holy State. Were it not for your nation's generous efforts, this venture would never have come to fruition. You are too kind, Lord Simon. You too have served an invaluable role in this. Though I must admit, the news of the union between your son and Lady Frederica came as quite the surprise. None in Hyzant considered that a bannerman of Glenbrook would join with the ruling family of Esfrost. I hear that Lady Frederica is the Archduke's half-sister. I must ask, how did this arrangement come to be? Oh, your curiosity is only natural. This union was promised during the war, an arrangement made with the previous Archduke. Truth be told, I am surprised one as well informed as yourself did not already know. Arrangement made during the war? Which I guess the war was 30 years ago? So I guess, is that even before Frederica was born? They were planning to marry, like... Somebody? And this is your son? As I recall. Sarah Noah Wolford, at your service, Minister. Hmm. Or maybe they were just, perhaps, thinking about the future will strengthen the bonds in some way between our two nations. Guess maybe we'll get specifics later. And I am Frederica Esfrost. My son still has much to learn, but I believe this marriage will herald a bright future for us all. For today, I intend to step down and leave House Wolfort in Sarah Noah's capable hands. You're abdicating your position? Just take a look at her profile quickly here. Saintly Seven, Minister of Medicine. Lila Viscraft. One of the saintly seven, she is a woman of superior intellect who was appointed to oversee the Ministry of Medicine. Wasn't... I think Gila was also previously in a position. Surprising news comes in pairs, I see. Nonetheless, I am happy for you both. I imagine the lords and ladies at tonight's banquet will take great interest in the new Lord Wolfort. As will I. 
Everyone wants to influence the new lord, I'm supposing. <laughs> Pray, go easy on the boy, my lady. I hear that young Lord Dragan of Esfrost shall also be in attendance. Indeed. He has been appointed to oversee operations at the Grand Norsalian Mines. I understand his star in Esfrost has seen a meteoric rise. Good. I would like to hear more of this new explosive substance he means to use to blast the tunnels. As a fellow scholar of sorts, if in a different field, I am always curious to learn how great discoveries are made. He should have arrived by now. Has anyone seen him? Dragan's gone to see the city. He was halfway there before the gangplank landed on the docks. Hmm. So I guess he ran off he somewhere. Cousin, yes. I see we share an innate curiosity for new places. The banquet will begin soon. I shall seek him out and escort him there. Alright, so we need to look for Very a dragon. Though I will host tonight's festivities, I want you to act as if you're already Lord of the House. Our guests are the most esteemed personages of their respective nations. Take care not to cause offense. Of course, Father. And Benedict's talking to her about something. Which I wonder what. So oh, Lord Dragon could be anywhere. I suppose this is a good opportunity as any to speak with the common folk. Exploration. The flow of the game comprises multiple phases. In addition to story scenes and battles, there will also be an exploration phase. In this phase, you may move freely about areas to gather information from the people around you, obtain items, review mechanisms, and terrain features that may serve you in battle, and more. So it's kind of interesting, you can kind of see the land where you may be battling later. Before you fight, right? Search for terrain that may help kind of strate strategize. I heard tell Prince Roland is shrinking his duties at the castle once again. Thank heavens that shiftless child isn't in line for the crown. So I guess Roland's not highly thought of in the city here either. I've been tasked with attending you at the ceremony tomorrow, my lord. May it be a joyous occasion for all. I'm eager to hear your speech, and even more eager to see you in triumph at the tourney. I sense you may have some questions regarding this joint mining venture. Allow me to enlighten you. Combining the expertise and manpower of Norzelia's three nations, this mine will unearth the newly discovered vein of iron. We hope this will prove beneficial for all parties, providing wealth and prosperity in equal measure. It is said Lord Dragon's knowledge of ironworking is peerless. I could think of none more suited to oversee the mine's development. Oh, nice, we found some HP recovery. What's this person? To see the peace we enjoy now, one would never think that but 30 years ago our realm was engulfed in war. The South Iron War seems not but a far off nightmare now. Added Marvels or Norzelia, Volume 12 to Notes. You will find notes as the game progresses. These notes have no direct effect on the story, but they will help you better understand Norzelia and its history. View notes you collected at any time by selecting War Chronicle notes from the main menu. Not that. Main menu here. War Chronicle notes. Volume 12. There is no site in the realm as impressive as the Hyzantian capital. After braving the vast desert, the first thing a visitor to this great city sees is a wall so huge it does not look like it could have been made by human hands. The goddess's shield. Pass through the gate and you will emerge into a thriving metropolis of believers. 
Just beyond the street lies the huge calm waters of the source. Unbelievable as it may seem, the city and the wall encircled the entirety of the Great Lake, where all of Norzalia's salt originates. In the center of the lake towers a mountain-like statue of the goddess, an enduring symbol of the Holy State's faith. Indeed, after beholding how Hyzant could not only survive in the middle of an inhospitable desert, but thrive, even an unbeliever such as myself started to think that the statue might actually be the goddess incarnate. In the palace in the city center lives the Hierophant, who they say hears the voice of the goddess of the salt herself. I imagine such a voice would be just as majestic and calm as the city she watches over. I wonder if he really does hear the goddess's voice or if he's just kind of pushes things in the way he wants. <laughs> it's kind of a power play or something. Volume 8 to notes, some more things. Up the Norzelia River and past a handful of craggy mountains lies as frosty capital. Despite the blizzards off whirling about it, the city itself is orderly and well maintained, and the people who dwell there spirited and undaunted. By working together, they have managed to thrive in one of the most inhospitable places in the realm. It is this fortitude that has allowed Asfrost to grow into a nation to be reckoned with. Asfrost Ironstone was carved out of a rocky mountainside, which is unusual but fitting for a land with countless iron mines within its borders. It functions as both a castle and an iron factory. Skilled artisans in the Grand Duchy are brought to the castle, where they mass-produce ironworks and engage in technological research. Thanks to an enormous forge, as large and as hot as the mouth of a volcano within the castle, they are able to create huge quantities of ironware and weapons on a daily basis for Asfrosty's, or Asfrost's pride and joy, the Black Irons. Upon the castle ramparts is arguably the crowning achievement of Asfrosty iron working. A giant, gigantic bell. Is that that in the picture there? In like beneath the, the head or like part of the chin? I cannot even begin to phantom how they managed to create such a beast. Each day the bell tolls the time for the people of the capital. It is so loud it can be heard all throughout the mountains has even been known to trigger avalanches on distant slopes. It's interesting. Greetings, my lord. My friends and I are playing hide and seek. I think it's just the same thing. Yep. Hannah? By your request, Bennett and I shall take part in the tourney. And we bring victory to the House of Fort. Sounds good. More items. Cat. Face this way. Meow. Meow. Nice. I wonder if there's like hidden items. Should I just click everywhere? Did I like climb that for a moment? Me up. Went up for like a second there, right? Oh, I like went into it, went into the wall. Maybe I should not try to bug out through <laughs> through the wall. I'm gonna get myself stuck in the corner. I should stop. Okay, let's keep moving. So we're going down a level. There's nothing like in these areas here, are there? There's an item over here. Some more HP recovery, it'll be useful. Another item here with some money. Nice. Looks like the two of them are talking. Just like him to gallivant off without with Gallivant off with nary of word of farewell. Still, I suppose this is a chance to become acquainted with my future home, 
How would you describe your town, Serenoa? To know a town, you must take time to relish her company. That's what Eridor told me in perhaps more colorful words. It is the port at the center of commerce, a town built on taxes, but not at the expense of fair trade. Trying to critical of the state of things. Well, for it is nested safely behind the castle walls. It is a town at peace and sets an example for the rest of the kingdom. To know a town, you must take time to relish your company. That's what Eridor told me, in perhaps more colorful words. Let's go with that one. I haven't known Eridor for long, but those words are undeniably his. Perhaps I have to take a page out of this book, as I've done regrettably little relishing since I arrived. You needn't push yourself, Frederica. Time is something we do not lack. Once matters have settled, I will give you a tour of Wolfort myself. Thank you, Serenoa. I very much look forward to that. You have given me much to consider. I believe I shall enjoy it here. I look forward to the day I can truly call it home. There's no rest for a young lordling. All eyes will be upon you in the coming days. Frederica and I shall make every effort to learn to lay of the land, so that we might share the weight of your duties. Thank you, thank you. My husband works from dawn till dusk at the port, lifting crates, and who knows what else. It's honest work, though, and the backbone of our livelihoods besides. We're playing hide-and-seek till Dal comes home. I need to find a place to hide, and quick! Take care not to hurt yourself. Your father wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. Ah, uh, one of my favorite games. Barrels were always my favorite place to hide. It takes a clever mind to hide. Perhaps you can use that cleverness to help your father when you're older. Take care not to hurt yourself. Your father wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. I will. Dog got awful mad when I climbed up on the rooftops. Awful mad. That anger comes from a place of concern. I'm not saying you shouldn't hide, but I promise you'll keep your safety in mind. Aye, a promise, my lord, is as good as gold. Thou will be glad to hear it. He'll be looking for me soon. I best find a spot, a safe one, before they catch me out in the open. There's been nothing amiss, my lord. Another quiet day. Saltmonger. The most esteemed personages from each nation will be attending the ceremony, I hear. A veritable melting pot of politics. Such an opportunity to meet and speak with your peers must not be wasted, my lord. More HP recovery. Gonna need all that I can get. I still can't believe Travis and his feral spawn attacked your dear bride to be like that. I'm just glad we got there before any really harm could be done, my lord. Yarder, I don't think you got there, but I guess, yeah, Wolfort got there before anything bad happened. A lot of folk have come to town for the ceremony. I even saw a man earlier wandering about in wide-eyed wonder. Dragon, perhaps? And who are you? I can scarce remember the last time Glenbrook was host to such a marvelous tourney. Who among the nations will win glory? Which shall be known as the fiercest in all of Norzelia? I mean, to be there when history is made. Of course it'll be me. I'm gonna win. All right, Dragon. This town is prosperous, and its people have faith in their lord, an impressive achievement by my experience. You are too kind, Lord Dragon. Ah, uh, my apologies, but you are? 
No apologies should be mine, I am Serenal Wolfort. I've come to remind you to return to the castle before the banquet begins. Certain parties were quite insistent. Of course, I appreciate the consideration. I would like to explore the town while... longer. But rest assured, I shall be punctual in my arrival. Ah, oh, I must make ready for the wedding ceremony. What gift would best suit the union of you and the Lady Frederica? Hmm... It's an impossible choice. Perhaps an audience with Lord Simon will spark inspiration. I believe that's everything. Should be off then. No more items, right? The kids talked about climbing under roofs, but... I don't know if I can, like, jump over there or anything. I can run, kind of. It's looking good, though. So, I think that's everything. Yes. The banquet will begin soon. Lord Dragon and I had best not arrive late. I wonder what happens if you ended that before finding Lord Dragon. At the banquet. I thank you for your hospitality today, Lord Saranoa. Overseer of Yeah, Overseer of the Grand Norzelian Mines, Dragon Asfrost. After his father, Savarog, was all but relegated to life on the Esfrosty Outlands, he dedicated himself to his studies at the Archives in hopes of restoring his family's honor. I wonder why they lost their position. Maybe something to do with the war? He is a young genius who discovered how to make explosives. So he's an explosive expert. Think nothing of it. Did you enjoy the city, Lord Dragan? Quite. Its people are full of life and love for their lord. That says all I need to know about House Wolfort. You honor us with your words. I am only being frank. Frederica is the sister of the Archduke, after all, and my cousin besides. I would not see her marry into an unworthy house. Suffice to say, my expectations were exceeded. I have heard much of your ingenious contributions to the mining efforts. I sense prosperous days are ahead of us. As do I. Finally, our nations enter into an age unfettered by war. With Esfrost's iron, Hyzant's salt, and Glenbrook's mediation, there is no limit to what we can achieve. We must regard each other as equals, and forge mutually beneficial relationships. I sense skepticism in your words, Lord Dragan. Do you mean to imply our relations are not already mutually beneficial? Uh-oh. Two nations are clashing. I need not imply anything. The salt tax you claim makes my case more than clear. Bold words from one so young. Is that how peers speak to one another? Perhaps the young ones, yes. What do you think, Lord Saranoa? Dissatisfaction with the salt tax was one cause of the war, was it not? Salt is a divine boon, a gift from the goddess to her true believers. That we saw in the description of the notes as well that about the goddess. Goddess in this town there. Kind of watching over the lake, I suppose, the salt. This is the foundation of the teachings that guide us in Hyzant. By allying with Esfrost, do you mean to gainsay our most fundamental beliefs? Kind of feels like they're introducing the players to uh, a player to some of the conflicts that'll become more important in the future. Here, give some background to why these nations are on edge. Of course not, Minister. We understand that the source is Norzelia's sole supply of salt, and we would not deny that it is the Holy State's right to harvest and tax it as you see fit. Thank you for acknowledging that. Though it strikes me that your words are measured. You needn't be so non-committal, Lord Saranoa. 
It is only reasonable that the three of us have differing opinions on the matter. However, that is all the more reason for us to be open to frank discussion. Hmm. Honored guests, <laughs> pray forgive my son. We of House Wolfort are but simple warriors. <laughs> I'm afraid matters of finance and politics do not come to us naturally. This, however, I can say. We will fight injustice and tyranny wheresoever it may be. Of course, we do not enjoy conflict. Still, we will not hesitate to defend our land and our people should the need arise. No matter how mighty the threat, we will fight for home and kingdom. Yes, Lord Simone. Of that we are keenly aware. I apologize if I spoke out of turn. But the fact remains that as every winter passes, the tension between our nations grows, and salt is the cause. The common folk have all but forgotten its taste. I simply want to ease their suffering. The ministry I oversee is committed to the preservation of life. I personally believe that salt should not be a luxury reserved for the privileged few. All those who live require it. Not just those lucky enough to be born within the borders of our holy state. You agree with me, then? How I feel matters little. In Hyzant, the word of the goddess, as conveyed to us from the lips of the Hierophant, is absolute. But perhaps this joint mining venture of yours may lead to the change you seek. Indeed, we must set our gazes to the future. All of us. I expect you will be the ones to usher us into a new era. Yes, Father. Looks like we have another side story again, so there's probably more to the banquet. Into the banquet, and also what do we have here? The children of the crown speak of their father, King Regna. So let's take a look at this side story here. spoke not a single word to me today. Before long, I fear I might forget the sound of his voice. Please, sister, you weep and wail like a common girl. Show some composure. So I guess she's a princess. My father has a kingdom to rule, a kingdom engaged in a historic endeavor. He has more important duties than to pamper a spoiled child. I... Yes, of course, brother. Let's take a look at her profile. Princess of Glenbrook, Cordelia Glenbrook, third child and only daughter of King Regna, who brought the Salt Iron War to its end. She is a young princess with a graceful air about her and prefers her kind-hearted brother Roland over the high-strung Franny. You speak as if father's duties include anything more than licking the boots of these dignitaries. It is inconceivable he cannot spare the time to break bread with his daughter. You speak out of insolence and ignorance, Roland. I speak only the truth. He leaves all the cumbersome tasks to the Wolforts and Minister Patria. A king's word is to be obeyed. And what of his subjects? Do they exist simply to bring him glory? To take the blame for his failures? They are to serve as he sees fit. You can see these two opposing ways of thinking. Roland sees the more human side of his subjects, being that they should be taken care of and I guess more treasured a little bit more. And Franny just sees them as people to rule over. The hell they are. Believe as you wish. Speaking of his subjects, it appears Lordship of House Wolfort will be passed down to young Saranoa. What? 
How fortunate for you to have a friend in the new lord. Best not take loyalty for granted, however. House Wolfort is obedient enough for now, but that can change as quickly as the wind. Use them well when you can, but be ready to bring down your fist if they dare to rise above their station. Hmm, so Franny just kind of views Wolfort and I guess other subjects kind of as tools to be used and thrown away or destroyed if something were to happen. Don't speak of them like lapdogs. They're not servants. They're my friends. Do you really think to lead with such a soft heart? You are not fit to wear the royal signet. Oh, stop this fighting at once. You frighten me. Enough of this. Where are you going, brother? To train with Sir Maxwell. I would clear my head. There is a tourney on the morrow, after all. Brother! I yield. Your spear wavers, my prince. Something weighs on your mind. So I believe this is Sir Maxwell, but we can't see his profile yet. You've always been able to see through me. It's no great feat. Your heart lies ever on your sleeve. Do I hear disapproval in your voice? Not exactly, my prince. It can be a weakness, yes, but it can also be your strength. After all, sometimes a direct strike is most effective at piercing a formidable defense. I will take those words to heart, Sir Maxwell. Thank you for today. The pleasure was mine. I expect a good fight from you tomorrow. In the final match, no doubt. I take the field with House Wolfort. Together, I have no doubt we can emerge triumphant. Ah, that would explain your improvement. Young Sarah Noah is a worthy training partner. Even so, I have no doubt you've held your own against him. Tomorrow you shall show the realm what I already know. That you are a warrior worthy of your family's legacy. Sir Maxwell, I... Sometimes I wish I wasn't a prince. Sometimes I wish I'd been born your son instead. Surely you jest, your highness. Your father is a great king, and an even greater man. It is an honor to serve him as I do. Apologies. I forget myself. I must have taken quite a blow. Anyhow, I suppose I should rest till the morrow. Be well, Sir Maxwell. It cannot be easy being the youngest prince. To have others expect nothing from you, yet still shake their heads in disapproval. But you can rise above this, my prince. Seize your chance and lay everyone's doubts to rest once and for all. Mm -hmm. So I guess Sir Maxwell kind of has his own objective, it seems. Maybe by showing Roland's st strength, it could strike discord inside of Glenbrook. Maybe Roland will be seen as a more, uh, somebody more fit to be the next king, which would be bringing a kind of battle between Roland and Franny, I guess, inside the, the royal family, right? Alright, saved. Right, in the next video, we'll be continuing along with the main story. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.